This is the Moto H30 Pro, the cheapest phone right now in India with Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. And after having used it, it doesn't feel like a compromised experience, except for one area. My name is Ashad, you're watching Tracking Tech English and this is our full review of the Moto H30 Pro and hopefully it'll help you make a better buying decision. Now starting with the software experience on the Moto H30 Pro because this is what sets this phone apart from its competition. Pixel lovers will appreciate the fact that this phone comes with the latest Android 12 software with a sprinkling of Motorola's very own MyUX goodness. And more importantly, Moto has committed to Android 13 and Android 14 upgrades along with 3 plus years of security upgrades as well. You get all the goodness of Android 12. You get the Discover feed, the new theming engine, the robust security features and more. Plus you get Moto actions with cool attentive features. For example, there's this setting which prevents your screen from dimming or going to sleep while you're looking at it. And then there are your famous gestures like the karate chop to open the torch or twist to open the camera. And there's also this new gesture where you double tap the power button and a cool menu of shortcuts opens up. Then there's Motorola's very own ThinkShield security feature which adds on to the robust security features of Android 12. And of course, let's not forget something that's exclusive on Motorola phones and that's Ready4. Ready4 works wirelessly with your TV to stream stuff from your phone to the TV screen. Honestly, the software experience on the Moto H30 Pro is the best you can find on an Android phone right now. Now talking about the design of the phone, it is your basic candy bar design with Gorilla Glass 5 protection on the back and Gorilla Glass 3 protection on the front. Now this glass sandwich design is not separated by a metal frame, but something that Motorola calls glass fiber. Now glass fiber is a mix of plastic and glass and it's slightly stronger than plastic itself. Also when I saw the design of the Moto H30 Pro for the very first time, I was slightly disappointed with how the camera bump looked. But now that I've actually held the phone in my hand and have used it for a long duration, I really like the fact that the camera bump has a slope and makes it feel very, very minimal. I can't really even call it a bump. It's just a slight blip. And add to that, you get this curved bag, a soft touch finish, and a thickness of just 8.79 millimeters and a weight of 196 grams, making it really nice to hold and use. Although I must say that the placement of the power button and the volume rocker is completely odd. It feels like it's on the second floor. While that works for landscape use really well, it doesn't work well for portrait use, and that's how we're gonna be using our smartphones all the time. Interestingly, this phone does come with IP52 rating. I know it's not the best out there, but the fact that you get IP rating is definitely a good thing considering a phone like the Ico 9 Pro that I reviewed recently doesn't have one. But obviously like most phones that cost upwards of rupees 40,000, there's no headphone jack, but there's a Type-C port at the bottom. Now you also do get a stereo speaker setup with the single speaker at the bottom, which works in tandem with the earpiece in dual stereo speaker setup. And you get support for Dolby Atmos as well. It doesn't sound very loud, but it sounds rich and detailed. And more importantly, it's got a volume of bass that feels really nice when you're listening to music. Take a listen for yourself. Now, when I looked at the display of the Moto H30 Pro for the very first time, what caught my attention was the fact that it has very slim bezels. As for the display specs, you've got a 6.7 inch P OLED display with 144Hz refresh rate, support for DCI-P3 color gamut, and 10-bit colors as well. But first things first, my concern with the Moto H30 Pro's display is the fact that it cannot even touch 1000 nits of brightness. Even if you're watching HDR videos or in HBM mode, the maximum brightness that it can touch is 700 nits. Having said that, it's plenty bright outdoors, but this is not top of the line when it comes to brightness. That said, 144Hz refresh rate is where Motorola takes the cake. It feels sublime and smooth in daily usage. Whether I'm swiping through Twitter or Instagram Reels, it just feels really, really good. And since this is a 10-bit color display, if you're playing HDR videos with 10-bit color support, it does look very vibrant. Talking about HDR support though, you get HDR support only on YouTube and Amazon Prime Video. It's not available on Netflix. 
Also, I have another minor niggle with the display. It's got a bit of a color shift at an angle, especially when you're looking at a white screen, you see a green color cast. This is something that I've noticed with P OLED displays. Now, another problem that I noticed is not with the phone, but with the fact that you guys are not subscribing to our channel. Please go ahead and do that. And maybe even like and comment below so that YouTube's algorithm can push this video to more people wanting to watch a review of the Moto H30 Pro. Now coming to the camera setup on the rear, you get a 50MP main camera, a 50MP ultra wide and a 2MP depth sensor that should be thrown in the trash. And on the front, you get the largest sensor that I've seen in a long time, a 60 megapixel selfie camera. Now to find out how the Motorola H30 Pro's camera performs, I compared it against the Samsung Galaxy S21 FE, which is in the same price range. Now the details aren't as sharp on the H30 Pro when compared to the S21 FE. Although the Moto does tend to be more accurate with white point accuracy and the overall color balance in different scenarios. Now the doll in the first sample here is pink on the Samsung Galaxy S21 FE. And in the second sample, the books are pink. Moto gets the reds almost right. But what I did notice is that dynamic range performance is mostly equally matched, but I did notice some fading in Samsung pictures, which is kind of odd. Now, when you're talking about human subject shots against the light, the Moto makes no effort to fix the overexposure in the background. The algorithm decides to expose the face and then take a lunch break. On the other hand, Samsung does more work than it is paid for, which is why in even lighting, Moto looks more true to life compared to the warm tones of the Samsung. Now, portraits on the Samsung look great because it punches in closer using the telephoto. Therefore, you get the right size of the face. Moto looks decent too and offers good edge detection as well, especially compared to the One X portrait of the S21 FE, which by the way, has some color temperature issues. But yeah, if I had to pick a phone for portraits, I'd go with the Samsung. Now, the 50 megapixel shots from the ultra wide angle camera on the Moto H30 Pro do take good photos in daylight, but are not necessarily much sharper than the S21 FE. Also, Moto is warmer compared to the cooler temperature of the Samsung. Plus, Samsung has a wider attached lens. Now, the Galaxy S21 FE has a dedicated telephoto and it feels so good to punch in closer and make a tighter frame with crisper shots. Digital zoom on the Moto looks average in comparison, obviously. Now, you can also take macro shots using Moto's ultrawide and they do look good, but you can use telephoto on the S21 FE and that manages to look fantastic as well. Moto's crazy high resolution selfie camera takes good photos in daylight. Samsung botches the color of the shirt here, but it has better facial tones. Now against the light, both do a good job with the dynamic range performance. Now between the two phones, when it comes to selfies, it's a toss up between the two. You can pick what you like. Although in selfie portraits, even if you push the depth effect to maximum, Moto plays it safe with the level of blur on the rear. And the edge detection is better on the S21 FE, especially if you see the way it has handled the beard on the right and the left chin. Until now, in our camera comparison, the Moto has put up a good fight, but when it comes to low light shot, Motorola straight up raises its hands. I'm not saying much here. Just take a look at the samples in low light with and without night mode. Anyone can tell that Samsung is sucker punching the S30 Pro into oblivion. The problem is Moto relies too much on the PDAF technology and exposes the scene for just a second or so, where Samsung takes at least three. The same is true for ultra wide low light shots. Take a look for yourself. And the same is true for selfies in low light as well. Samsung just does way better in low light, whichever camera you're shooting with. Now coming to video recording, Moto can shoot 8K videos from the rear at 30 FPS, which is definitely an advantage. But when matched at 4K 60 FPS, the S21 FE has better sound recording quality, stabilization, colors, dynamic range, basically everything. Also, for some odd reason, the Moto phone always defaulted to a wider field of view. I just couldn't change it even if I changed the aspect ratio. Similarly, with the ultra wide angle camera, the S21 FE can shoot 4K 30 FPS videos, whereas Moto tops out at 1080p 30 FPS. And you can clearly see how the Samsung phone decimates Moto here. Now, using the front camera, you get stabilized footage in 1080p resolution, but the S21 FE can do it at 60 FPS and Moto tops out at 30 FPS. Whether it is the sound, the footage looks good and really good on both actually. I'm walking really fast with the phones right now, as you guys can tell. But the footage looks good and really good on both actually. I'm walking really fast with the phones right now, as you guys can tell. The facial tones, the crispness of the footage, stabilization or dynamic range, the Samsung is better. Similarly, in 4K videos using the front camera, you don't get EIS on both the phones, but Samsung can shoot at 60 FPS again, where Moto tops out at 30. Again, as you could tell, front camera video recording again is better on the S21 FE.
I mean, I don't even have to say this. If you have to pick a good camera phone under Rs. 50,000, the S21 FE is the way to go. The Moto H30 Pro didn't live up to my expectations. And to be entirely honest, I wasn't expecting any magic either. Now coming to the performance, this phone of course comes with Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, LPDDR5 RAM and UFS 3.1 storage. In Android 2, it doesn't match the 1 million score of the iQoo 9 Pro, but it does well for itself. But what matters more is the sustained performance of flagship processors inside flagship phones. And the Motorola H30 Pro only throttled to 74% of its max performance when I did the CPU throttle run, which is pretty good. But in the 3D Mark Wildlife stress test, it managed only 59.4% stability. But what I really liked about the Motorola is that it only touched a max degree of 38 which is very, very good. Also, while I was shooting pictures with the Moto H30 Pro, the S21 FE got hotter than the Moto H30 Pro. Now, if you're gaming with the phone, Motorola also has a special game mode called Game Time. And if you're looking at graphics performance, you can play COD Mobile at very high and max frame rates. And in BGMI, this phone can do HDR plus extreme and ultra HD and ultra frame rates. This is a pretty good gaming phone. I genuinely enjoyed playing games on it also because it has a flat display. And when you're talking about network performance, Motorola has left no stone unturned. You get 13 5G bands, you get support for Wi-Fi 6E and you get support for three carrier aggregation as well. And in my testing, the call quality was great. The 4G performance was very good too. Now, coming to the battery life on the Motorola H30 Pro. This is the best battery life that I have managed to achieve on a Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 phone. Motorola claims two days worth of battery life. I couldn't stretch it to two days, but with my heavy usage, I got six hours and 10 minutes of screen on time and it lasted me easily more than a day, almost lasting me one and a half days. I think the adaptive battery setting within stock Android on Android 12 works really, really well. I genuinely enjoyed the battery life on the Moto H30 Pro. So coming to the conclusion, when it comes to software, when it comes to performance, when it comes to battery life, the Motorola H30 Pro aces it. Display is pretty good too, especially that 144Hz refresh rate is really nice. I just wish it could have been slightly brighter. Having said that, we are aware of the compromise that it makes and it is in the camera performance. But my mind keeps going back to the fantastic pricing of about Rs. 50,000, which goes down to 45,000 with the different bank offers that you get. So if you don't care for the best camera performance, the Moto H30 Pro is a really, really enticing proposition. Tell me, aren't you itching to buy one too? You know what? Pricing plays a huge role in how you perceive a product and that's across categories. Moreover, I had a feeling that I was using a premium phone all throughout my review period because of the cohesive software experience that you get on the Moto H30 Pro, which is a rarity in Android these days, except for of course One UI 4. And especially coming from an iQoo 9 Pro, that feeling was amplified. This phone is a joy to use. So that was our detailed review of the Moto H30 Pro. What did you guys think of it? Do let us know in the comment section below. Until next time, keep tracking and stay safe.